welcome back to my podcast, Health, Wealth and My 30 Plus Self. I hope you are having a wonderful week so far. It is a Friday afternoon and I thought, you know what, I'm going to jump on here and record a podcast before the weekend. I just got back from a trip in Berlin over the last few days and it was amazing. Really great city. I love history and architecture and it was just the perfect city for that just did so much exploring um a lot of walking and yeah just had the best time really needed to switch off after the craziness of this year and 2024 I feel like I literally have been running running on like 200 300 miles per hour (laughs) for the last few months so even though it wasn't like a relaxing lie down holiday, it was just nice to switch my brain off for a bit. Do you know what I mean? Um, But now we're back. We are priming and preparing for a successful week ahead. And today I thought I would come on here and basically talk about where we should put our energy and focus with our fitness journey. So we're going to be talking about hybrid fitness. We're going to be talking about whether we should put our focus into strength training, cardio, functional movements, classes, and what is best for total body wellness, but also weight loss, body composition. And obviously it's highly dependent on your goals and what you want to achieve. But hopefully this episode will really help you if you are in any way unsure around where you should be putting your energy and focus on your fitness journey. So as always, if you are enjoying this podcast, would really appreciate um, rating it five stars on Spotify or Apple or wherever you're listening to. Hit the subscribe button. Um, It just helps my podcast reach more people. So where to begin? Well, my journey, my fitness journey started in 2015. And I say started then because actually I was trying and failing at starting a fitness journey for years before that but it was only 2015 when I was able to become consistent at it and this is when I started focusing on identity and who I wanted to become as opposed to just outcome goal or losing a little bit of weight Um, and I truly believe that's what what caused me to be successful on my journey and this is why I'm such a big advocate for it becoming a part of you and you embarking on exercise therapy, not just for an arbitrary weight loss number, but because you care about your health, because you want to be the best, fittest, healthiest version of yourself, because you know that it is an enabler for uh, improved quality of life, reduced risk of disease, um, setting a good example for your kids and all of that good stuff. So I'm super, super big on utilizing exercise for all of that good stuff and not just doing it because you want to lose a few pounds on the scales. I mean, that's all well and good, but it really isn't, the, you know, isn't, <laughs> isn't life and death. Whereas a lot of, a lot of the stuff I aim for really is, you know, when it comes to quality of life and the life I want to lead in my fifties, sixties, seventies and eighties, like it's so so vital um for all of that good stuff so we're going to talk about it today and I've got a few studies to share as well which I hopefully I think will be really really useful for you to learn about um and when I started my journey I didn't have a clue what I was doing right I was this is before I was a personal trainer before I was a nutritionist coach and it was in the early Instagram days where it was all a little bit toxic. Um, and there was so many Instagram workouts with all these weird exercises and like combo moves, which I know now to be like not the most effective way to build a body. Um, but obviously at the time I didn't have a clue and I just would save all of these workouts, head to the gym and literally just follow them. <laughs> um, and yeah, it'd be all these weird things like curtsy squat into side leg lift or all these weird combo combo moves, um, things on a BOSU ball, like burpees mixed in, like all of this stuff. And of course, I don't train like this at all now. Um, But I did a bit of that. I also did the couch to 5k. So that really built up my baseline 
fitness, you know, cardiovascular fitness. So I did Couch to 5K in 2015 as well when I started my journey. Um, I also did a bit of swimming. So threw a, threw a few swim sessions in there just because it was included in my gym membership. And I also threw in a few classes. So I did a couple of Les Mills classes back in the day, you know, the body, body attack, body combat, things like that. Uh, so I actually had a really nice, well-rounded mix without realizing of fitness and of strength training. Um, and although whilst it probably wasn't the most optimal split it was enjoyable which I think is super super important when you first start a journey and you're building up that intrinsic motivation and um, you know doing it because it makes you feel good because you enjoy it um, but it also helped me to develop the habit of doing something active most days like you're talking six six days out of the week and this really was integral for my success because it meant that I didn't have to diet quite as heavily or restrictively um, because I was being so active it also meant that I I took um, very much a exercise focused approach to my journey, not saying the nutrition isn't important because it really is, it's probably the most important thing. But I tell you what, by focusing on the exercise, you're going in with a very positive approach to your journey. And, and also because you're working so hard to improve your fitness, improve your strength in the gym, you then don't want to go and blow that by eating a load of crap, you know. So for me, it really domino affected into my other lifestyle habits like the nutrition and the habits and the food. Um, which definitely paid off when it came to results as well. And obviously, as I went through this journey, I lost all of my weight in a, sort of a two year period. And I started building more muscle and getting more clued up on the gym and doing my research and learning about studies and how to train more effectively. I then had loads of other women asking me what I was doing and how I've changed my body so much. And basically, they were just asking for hints and tips. But I loved helping people. I loved giving them this advice. And, and I thought, actually, why, why don't I do this as a career? Why don't I help people for a living? And that's kind of how I ended up in this space. And I ended up being becoming a personal trainer and then getting loads of other qualifications as well. A doctor's referral specialist, lower back pain, like all of that good stuff, which then enabled me to help more people. And through going on that journey and obviously getting qualified, I then became a lot more clued up as to what was the optimal way of doing things. And when I started in the gym as my first kind of personal training job, I got super into my lifting and that's where it almost become a little bit of a once you're in that space of personal trainers and some of them are very quite quite eag high, big egos and all of that stuff I was then like right I need to be strong because that will prove that I know what I'm talking about and all of that good stuff so I ended up really focusing on strength but actually what happened was I neglected my cardiovascular fitness a little bit you know I wasn't running as often I wasn't doing a lot of metabolic conditioning um, so as much as I got super super strong and I was focusing on you know getting that extra five kilos on my deadlift or whatever um, or improving my squat and don't get me wrong I did get super super strong and I still am strong <laughs> But I did kind of neglect my cardiovascular fitness a little bit. And what I realized was actually that was integral and a really important thing for me to, to continue with, not only for my cardiovascular fitness, but also weight maintenance um, and just generally like being the fittest and healthiest version of myself, right? Because you can be super, super strong in the gym, but that doesn't necessarily translate into everyday life and, and, and general fitness. So I've recently bought the cardiovascular training back in and I've tried to maintain a certain level of cardiovascular fitness, which has been great for me. And I've really found a good balance of strength and fitness um, because we've only got so many hours in the day, right? And we've only got so many days we can train. So you really have to pick and choose. Actually, do you want to be, you know, a master of one training trade or a bit of more of a jack of all trades and I'm content with being a bit more of a jack of all trades you know I may not be um lifting quite as heavy but I'm still living lifting pretty pretty damn heavy compared to most people in the gym but then I'm also making sure that my cardiovascular fitness is in a decent place but again I'm not a marathon runner but I've got a good level of cardiovascular fitness and it also means that I can pivot and I can kind of go you know what if I do ever want to train for a 10k or a half marathon I can put a bit more focus and energy into my running while still maintaining my strength um, two to three times a week and equally if I really wanted to progress in the gym um, build a bit more muscle do a bit more hypertrophy trophy then I can change my split to, to, to 
to accommodate that and maybe drop drop the runs down. Do you know what I mean? So building out the kind of hybrid approach to my training has been really good for me and it's really helped me to get that balance and I'm a big advocate of it because I, as I said, at one point I did go too far the other way. And part of that was actually working with a bodybuilding coach. You know, he gave me a five day strength training split and he said, you know what, don't worry about cardio, um, just get your 10K steps in. And I kind of took that approach for a long time, but then I realized actually the cardio really helps me and I'm not a bodybuilder, you know, I'm not going to go and step on stage. Um, I made that choice a long time ago, part of my weight loss journey. You know, I've got a lot of loose skin for, for one part of it, but also I don't really believe that for me getting to 12, 13% body fat is going to be good for me hormonally. Um, there's a potential for relapsing and, and developing disordered eating. So for me, I knew it wasn't the right thing to do. And I got a taste of that by getting down to 19, 20% body fat for a fitness shoot. Um, again, really super proud of the physique that I achieved, but was very conscious of actually it's so easy to relapse and develop these disordered eating behaviors um so it's about figuring out what is the right approach for you you know is it just about being as lean as possible but at what cost or is it about developing a healthy relationship with food living in a healthy body you know not necessarily the leanest body but a body that enables you to feel confident um within your skin but also not restrict not overly not overtrain. you know and make sure that we're having adequate rest, recovery and all the rest of it. And also balancing that with our other healths, you know, whether that's our social health, emotional health, environmental health, etc. So, yeah, I think going on that journey has really helped me to recognize what I actually want to achieve. And hopefully you'll be doing the same on your journey and figuring out, actually, do I want to get as lean as possible and maybe step on stage? Or do I want to be as strong as possible and maybe compete in powerlifting or something like that? Um, or maybe I want to be as fit as possible and I want to train uh, marathons and half marathons. Or maybe I don't want any of that and I just want to become a healthy healthy, well-rounded um, person who cares about their health and wellness and makes it an integral part of their life, but with no real outcome goal. It's more just about maintaining that healthy lifestyle and eat. all of the above is absolutely fine to do. It's about aligning it with your core values and actually what you want to get from life. So yeah, so there's so many things to think about here. And when it comes to strength training, it really does have its own benefits, irrespective of weight loss. So when we put our body into a calorie deficit, so if you're trying to lose fat, you're putting your body into this energy deficit. And what can happen is your body eats into tissue, it eats into fat, muscle, water. And if you're not prioritizing preserving that muscle, then you can downregulate your metabolism quite quickly and substantially. And this can make it really hard to maintain your weight, which is why I'm super, super big on preserving lean muscle tissue. And this is done in a few ways. It's done by prioritizing strength training in the gym and actually sending the signal of muscle retention to the body by lifting weights and tearing down the tissue so it comes back stronger. It's also done in the kitchen with adequate protein intake. Um, protein is the, the, its main function is to build and repair muscle. Um, and amino acids are essentially the building blocks of protein. So by consuming those amino acids through protein, you're essentially just helping to build and repair muscle uh, through the food that you eat. So that's also super important. And muscle is also important um, because, sorry, protein is also important because it has a higher metabolic effect than carbs and fats. So your body actually burns more calories to digest and absorb uh, protein compared with carbs and fats. So it all kind of adds up, you know, that again, the, the changes might be minimal, but it all kind of adds up into a net positive. So you're burning more calories by digesting and absorbing protein than you do carbs and fats. You're also bumping up your metabolism slightly by having more protein at rest. You're also uh, building that muscle through your strength training program and making sure that you're sending that muscle retention signal to the body. So it all has these kind of building blocks towards you essentially keeping muscle. So it's only body fat that you lose. And, and then this is important functionally, but also for body composition and how you actually look through your weight loss journey, right? I know my body 
would look completely different if I'd never strength trained. You know, the fact that I've got some shoulders, the fact that I've got some quads and some glutes has changed my body so much compared to if I'd never stepped foot in a gym. Um, and would I even have maintained my weight if I hadn't ever started strength tra training? I really don't think so because that habit is now ingrained and I've carried on building muscle as well after losing the fat, which has further transformed my body from when I got to my goal weight as well. And you can see that in pictures. So strength training is, is, is integral. And as a minimum, you want to be training two times a week. Um, obviously, the more you train, the more benefit that there is. Um, four times a week is going to be better than three. Five times a week is going to be get better than four. But of course, um, you've got to be realistic about what's achievable for you. And there is also something called maximal recoverable volume, which is where you're doing the absolute maximum you can and still being able to recover. And this is the people that are training, you know, your six times a week with one rest day. And they might be doing something like push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs as a training split. Um, but again, those people are probably focusing on hypertrophy, bodybuilding style workouts, as opposed to a hybrid approach where you might want to train more full body and do it two to three times a week alongside your cardiovascular training. So that brings me nicely into cardiovascular training um, or cardio for short, which is essentially there to promote heart health and build up your heart fitness, your cardiovascular fitness. And of course, the more that you train, the better your cardiovascular fitness will be. Now, cardio is different to strength training. It's aerobic, whereas strength training is anaerobic. It basically means training without oxygen. This is where you can do a short burst of activity, like 10 to 10 seconds, 10 to 30 seconds, and then you have to rest and it's very high intensity. Whereas aerobic training or cardio is a lot more steady state. So you're raising your heart rate, but you're able to maintain that for long periods of time. Um, and it's more for muscular endurance than obviously your kind of high volume strength training, lifting heavy weights at low reps. So it's a completely different style of training. So to actually develop both energy systems is probably a good idea when it comes to overall wellness. Um, and But also cardiovascular training, you're actually burning more, from a weight loss perspective, you're actually burning more calories per minute than you are strength training. So from a calorie to calorie, minute to minute kind of comparison, Cardio is actually better. But again, this is looking at it face value. Whereas like we just spoke about before, strength training has a better effect on metabolism further down the line because you're building muscle, which improves your BMR um, and all of that good stuff. But it is minimal. So cardio, if you were to train, for example, go out on a run for an hour, you'd probably burn 500 calories plus, whereas strength training, you may only burn 300 calories. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, so cardio has its own benefits. You've got benefits for weight loss and improving, obviously, your total daily energy expenditure um, and your calorie burn. But you're also improving your heart health um, and you're also improving your muscular endurance. Um and just your ability to function, I think, day to day, because think about it. If you're someone who can run half an hour without stopping, God forbid there's a zombie apocalypse, you know, <laughs> you're going to be able to outrun the zombies. Or, you know, let's say you do a charity hike up a mountain. You're going to be more likely to be able to keep up and be physically fit to climb that mountain if you're cardiovascular fitness is in a good place as opposed to if you're just strength training and not doing any cardiovascular fitness do you see what I'm saying <laughs> so zombie apocalypse or not um any walking dead fans here just me <laughs> um but either way you're kind of preparing your body for the world and whatever life throws at you which I think is again a really good place to be so we've spoken about strength training we've spoken about cardio so where do things like classes and functional fitness play into that well, classes, obviously there's a range of different classes, but a lot of the time they combine uh, some form of strength training occasionally with aerobic fitness. And obviously some are more aerobic based and some are more strength based. You've got like your body pump and stuff like that, which do incorporate weights, but it's much more kind of high rep, low weight. Um, so again, you're developing more of your muscular endurance and aerobic capacity as opposed to high volume strength training. Um, but then you've got obviously your kind of real aerobic classes, dance classes, etc., which are going to benefit your, your heart health and your fitness. But what you may find with these classes is that you you will outgrow them 
I think they're very, very good. Firstly, to get you into an environment where there are other people who care about their health and fitness. It's also very social, so you can make friends. It can be very intrinsically motivating because you enjoy it and it's fun, right? The instructors are generally very good at making the class fun and enjoyable, so it doesn't feel as much like work, um, which again is important for long-term success. Um, And... uh, Obviously, it's going to improve your fitness and strength. Of course it is. Uh, But I do think, and I certainly found this on my journey, that eventually you do sort of outgrow the classes. You can become very adapted to them. So let's say you go to body, uh, body attack three times a week for a year. You're going to find body attack a lot easier to do at the end of that year compared to the start, right? So then how do you push yourself? How do you get yourself to that next level? Our bodies are also really good at adapting to the workouts that we do. We don't burn as many calories as we did initially, which again might have a down um, playing effect on, a downward effect on your ability to maintain your weight. So this is where strength training is really useful because you can do something called progressive overload, which is where you're constantly pushing yourself with the weights and the reps and the sets and you're going heavier and you're getting stronger and you're adapting and you're getting stronger still. And same with fitness and running, you know, you can you can run for longer durations, you can run a quicker time, um, you can run at a higher intensity and all of that stuff is going to help as your body gets fitter and adapts. Whereas that may not always be possible with the classes and you may find that you outgrow them. Classes were actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They were kind of frowned upon, like they were looked on quite badly by the personal trainers that I used to work with when I worked in, in a gym. And it, it's a shame really, because actually if you've got someone who otherwise wouldn't train at all, if they didn't go to the classes, then I'd rather them go to the classes than not train at all. But also I want to empower women and educate women to you be comfortable and confident to use the weight room and to recognize that they are just as worthy of being there as you know your gym bros and your bodybuilders and all the rest of it. Um, and that actually the first time we all step into the gym, we're super nervous and anxious. And it's only through exposure that you actually get more confident going. So I encourage all of you, like if you're feeling nervous to step into that gym right now, like just go and just go just step on the treadmill for half an hour and then maybe try a machine or try some dumbbells in a corner and do like a shy girl workout you know just increase your exposure and you'll eventually become a lot more accustomed to being there so as you progress through your journey you may also find that actually classes no longer serve you in the same way that they did before and if you get more into your lifting and you really want to push yourself and see what your body can achieve then this is definitely where hybrid training can be useful it's also where training for something can be useful whether that's a race or an event or just pushing yourself with the weights that you want to achieve in the gym and being able to do your first pull up for example your first push up or squat your body weight or deadlift your body weight you know all of that good stuff is really incredible So let's talk about studies. Let's get some science on this podcast. So I've got some studies that I I want to share with you to help you navigate what actually is going to be best for you based on your goals and what you can commit to the process. So a 2017 meta-analysis, which was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, compared the effects of hybrid training and traditional strength training on body composition in overweight and obese adults. The study found that both groups experienced significant improvements in body composition, which is basically fat loss and muscle gain. But the hybrid training group showed slightly greater reductions in body fat percentage. And this doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, that hybrid is definitely better, but it does suggest potential advantages for fat loss. So again, this is, I I second that with my own journey, right? Earlier on, I spoke about getting too far into my strength and neglecting cardio and actually struggling a bit with weight maintenance. Whereas now I've really reined that in with my hybrid training. So I totally, um, based on personal experience, I had the same experience as this. There was another study in 2018, um, which compared the effects of hybrid training and traditional strength training on muscle strength and hypertrophy in healthy young men. And this study found no significant difference between the two groups in terms of muscle strength. However, the hybrid group showed a trend towards greater muscle growth. So that's very interesting. Um, So now let's look at the difference between hybrid training and cardio. So 
A 2020 study, which was published in Sports Medicine, reviewed research on the effects of different exercise types on visceral fat. So visceral fat is the internal fat that sits around your organs. The review found that hybrid training might be more effective than cardio alone for reducing visceral fat, a significant risk factor for metabolic diseases. So very, very interesting um, that it potentially helps to reduce visceral fat, which is the fat stored around your organs, compared with just cardio alone. And I've read this with other studies as well when it comes to visceral fat, that there's certain health, like certain behaviors you can adopt, whether that's aerobic training, strength training, that specifically targets visceral fat, which is the harmful fat around your organs, um, what, irrespective of whether you're in a calorie deficit or not. So it just shows that actually health markers can still be improved, even if you're not in a calorie deficit, just by adopting these healthier behaviors. It's really fascinating. Um, another study compared the effects of hybrid training in cardio on cardiovascular health and body composition in middle-aged adults. And the study found that both groups experienced improvements in cardiovascular health, but the hybrid training group showed greater reductions in body fat percentage. And I guess this is because if you're training hybrid, that means you're training strength and cardio. So of course, you're going to be building muscle, whereas cardio, you're not going to be building as much muscle. Um, so it shows the effects, the positive effects of body composition, which is your fat to muscle ratio. Um, so of course, goes back to what I was saying earlier about the impacts of strength training versus cardio and why I think you should adopt both into your regime. And then let's look quickly at strength training versus cardio. So a 2013 study, which was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, compared the effects of strength training and cardio on metabolic health in overweight and obese adults. The study found that the strength training led to greater improvements in insulin sensitivity, which is a marker for blood sugar control compared to cardio. So this is fascinating because when it comes to making sure that we are regulating our blood sugar, which is going to help reduce the likelihood of us developing um, pre, uh, type 2 diabetes, essentially, that strength training actually helped that more than cardio. So again, it just shows that we've got these different benefits that we get from the strength training and the cardio. And trying to make room for both within our regime is super, super important. So definitely suggests, well, these studies definitely suggest that it really does offer some advantages, particularly for fat loss and potentially for muscle growth as well. Um, and just generally, you know, when it comes to what, like we spoke about at the start, that well-rounded, healthy version of yourself and achieving that, that it makes sense to be cardiovascular fit, um, but also to be strong and able and combining the two may mean that you're not going to ever be the fastest, fastest, fastest version of yourself. You're never going to be the strongest, strongest, strongest version of yourself, but you're going to kind of be meeting in the middle and you're going to be faster and you're going to be stronger. Um, and if at any point you want to kind of prioritize one over the other, you know, that's okay. That's your prerogative. Um, but yeah, that's, that's essentially what I would suggest. Um, but obviously, it's highly dependent on you. It's highly dependent on your goals. It's highly dependent on what you can and can't achieve um, and fit within your schedule. For, for example, at the moment, I do three lifting sessions and three runs a week. So I, I commit an hour a day, six days a week to my exercise routine. And I, I essentially do lift, run, lift, run, lift, run. And at the moment, I'm doing lower, upper, full body at the gym. Um, if you can only do two sessions a week at the gym, full body is probably going to be a best bet because you want to be hitting the, the muscle groups multiple times per week, focusing on compound lifts, especially if you're hybrid training. And then, yeah, the running, obviously you just follow your running plan, whether that's couch to 5k, 5k to 10k, et cetera. And you just try and get faster, fitter, better at running. And as the saying goes, if you find running hard, run more, not less. <laughs> so with that, I will leave you. Um, thank you so much for listening as always to health, wealth and my 30 plus self.